subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel so what is up guys nick here helping you to master your technology and welcome to my iphone 10 eight months later experience now a quick bit on this video before we get started this video is going to be an experience objective based video many people have been requesting can you give me an update on your iphone 10 should i buy it now or should i wait for the updates that are coming in september for this device well that's what we're here to find out in this video Okay, so allow me to share my experience with the body here of the iPhone 10. Now it's easy to look at the iPhone 10 in photos and think that might be the most beautiful thing you've ever seen when it comes to a phone, but actually using it is not always the same story. So I wanna go ahead and share with you the positives and negatives that I found of using the iPhone 10. Number one is that the iPhone 10 does have, I think, one of the most gorgeous designs I've ever seen on a smartphone. So that's the first positive I really like about this phone. Second positive is that stainless steel border is very durable. So it feels very sturdy and strong in the hand, probably stronger than any material Apple has used before on any of their iPhones. So that's another positive. Another positive is how the display on the body goes all the way down to the edge. This is like unlike any other smartphone and one of the standout traits of the iPhone 10. But there are a couple of things I didn't like about the iPhone 10 and that is, well, I know some people are going to disagree with me on this point, but it is a little bit more weighty than like an iPhone 7 or an iPhone 6s. So you can definitely feel that if you're coming from these phones and you upgraded, it feels more like a brick in your pocket than these lighter featherweight phones like the iPhone 7 when it's aluminum body and the iPhone, you know, 6s before it were a little bit lighter than this device. However, you can't associate that with premium, so that's going to come down to personal preference. Number 2 the sides even though they're very durable they do scratch rather easily you're never going to see this here on my camera lens but in my experience i've been ex seeing a bunch of scratches micro scratches albeit but scratches around the stainless steel so if you want to hide that a little bit more i do recommend you get the gray version of this device also on the body that camera hump always rocks on the table if you're not using a case with this phone however i think most people are using a case there's one of those scratches i was talking about right there so if you put this phone on a table you can see it will rock quite a bit so it's not the perfect device overall and another thing is i think that for the future iphone we could see apple get rid of this notch up here we'll talk more about the notch later but overall i think it's a super well balanced phone and of the largest iphones like a large iphone hands down this is the most comfortable phone actually this might be one of the most comfortable phones period when it comes to like a six inch 5.8 to six inch device this is super comfortable so overall i've really enjoyed the body and the feel and hand build quality of the iphone 10 but it does have a couple shortcomings like i say the camera up is huge and then it does get scratched around the edges and uh, that's about it here when it comes to the iPhone 10. Okay, so eight months later, let's talk about that display on the iPhone 10. This is a super AMOLED display sourced by Samsung, 16 million colors across a 5.8 inch panel with an 82.9 screen to body ratio. And what has my experience been like using it? Well, you know, I've used a lot of Samsung Galaxy phones and coming to this is no surprise. The only difference is that this phone really toned down the saturation. Now, a lot of, you know, Apple biased tech sources are going to go ahead and tell you this is the best display on a smartphone. You know, a lot of websites are going to claim that. And that's mostly due to the way Apple calibrated this display to be a more natural look. But that's personally, you know, going to be subjective. If you like a more punchy, saturated phone, this one is not going to do what OLED typically does, and that is just stand out in the saturation. This one is more balanced, more, I would just say natural. It's just more of a yellowish hue as well, more warm display here on the iPhone 10. And to a lot of people's eyes, that's going to be very comfortable. The, the Android phone that gets closest to you, the iPhone is the Huawei P20 series. That phone is very equally or just about similar calibrated as the iPhone 10. But looking at any Samsung like S9, S9 Plus, Note 8, those phones are much more saturated than this device. So that's the first thing I want to get out of the way with the display. Second of all, I really enjoyed the quality of this display because it has really sharp resolution in comparison to the older phones. So the text on the display it's just a little bit higher in the pixels per inch. And anytime you get more density, you just get a better looking display overall. Whether people say they can't see it or not, if you look at it side by side, you could definitely see it compared 
to a phone with less density. So 1125 by 2436 pixels per inch has been pretty great. But this display is not all rosy. We know we're gonna talk about the notch here. So the notch does still get in the way. And even after eight months, I don't care what people say they can't see it. I'm a detailed person. So personally, I can see it. I look at the details. I'm looking at this flower in my photos. I wanna zoom in. And then instead of me looking at the photo, my eye is gonna go up here to the notch just for a quick second. Then I'll come back to the photo because it's just getting in the way of my content. Next up, if I go into like watch a YouTube video, say you got an iPhone 10 and you're watching the Nick Ackerman channel. I'm sure you've seen the notch when you're watching my videos right here. So you can watch it like this, but then you get basically an iPhone 7 size screen and that's not 5.8 inches, but you wanna go the full 5.8, then you cut into the notch there. And one last application is when you are in Safari reading and use the reader mode, your text does cut into the notch. So as I have said in some prior videos, the display itself is gorgeous quality. And I think that you can, it's so good in fact that it can make you forget about the notch. It can make you accept the notch just because how good the display is itself, the quality of the panel, but it's still gonna draw your eye from time to time. And no matter how you know much you try to avoid it, sometimes the notch just gets in there in your content. Now, if you choose to look at it or not, you choose to turn a blind eye to it, that's up to you. But people who are detail oriented or look at specifics, they're gonna see that every single time. So to me overall, this display definitely is good enough for me to accept the notch, but it's not like I wanna see this display with notches for the next several years. I hope they do eventually get rid of this natural evolution to an all screen display. Now I wanna talk about the software with the iPhone 10. Now what I've experienced is extremely fast performance on iOS, that's to be expected. And the later versions of iOS 11 have gotten even better. And, and iOS 12 is gonna be even faster on this phone. So when it comes to performance, you've known if you've seen my speed test before, that the iPhone 10 has basically crushed the competition in most regards. There's only a couple of phones that beat it or could keep up with it, and you know which ones those are. OnePlus 6, Galaxy S9 Plus, those phones can keep up, if not beat this phone on the day-to-day. -day. But other than that, it's right up there in the top fastest phones you can buy. The gestures is what we need to talk about here. Have I gotten used to it? Absolutely, and as a matter of fact, I find this more fluid to use than like the home button. The home button just feels old and outdated compared to the gestures. However, the gestures are still something you gotta remember in your brain to do every time. So if you're new and you're thinking about buying one of these, just embrace it because this is the future of the iPhone and you're gonna have to accept it if you wanna use iPhones going forward. They're all gonna implement this gesture system. In iOS 12, they also remove the ability to have to hit two times to close apps. Like right now, if you try to close an app like this, it just does this thing. In iOS 12, it naturally just will fly away. So it's gonna get updates there as well. But the software on the whole, some applications have been crashing and iOS was buggy initially in some phases of the OS, but on the whole, it's been almost a perfect experience as the iOS 11 has been updated and updated and updated. This phone like never crashes and uh, never has any issues when it comes to like it turning off or just freezing, nothing like that. Sometimes apps could just glitch out on you if they haven't been properly optimized for the iPhone 10. But other than that, like system apps, everything else, perfect performance. Three gigs of RAM is plenty enough combined with that Apple A11 Bionic. As a matter of fact, the claims that this phone is as fast as a MacBook feel true when using this day to day. You could probably get similar power performance out of this as an actual MacBook. That's pretty incredible for a smartphone. Now I wanna discuss Face ID because Face ID is not always accurate. Let me go ahead and open it up real quick. And you could see when you do see it in the right lighting, it is pretty accurate. But on the whole, Face ID has been really cool in how you can go into applications. For example, you know, if you wanna use your banking application or something, it sometimes does have that already ready to go ahead and use the Face ID. A lot of apps can authenticate with Face ID, and that's pretty cool considering that, you know, Face, face Unlock on other phones cannot do that. But at the same time, other phones usually have a fingerprint scanner. You don't have that here. I think Apple could have easily stuck that 
on the back of this device, but maybe because they don't want to complicate things a bit, having more than one facial or one unlock system might confuse users, and that goes against, you know, trying to be a very simple, easy to use solution. So on the whole, I think Face ID needs a lot of work in terms of accuracy because it does miss quite a bit, specifically when you're wearing like certain types of sunglasses, you're wearing like a hat or something, or even in the darkest situations, sometimes it will miss. So it's not always perfect. And a lot of times you will find yourself hitting that passcode to get into your phone. But when it does work, it feels like you're right in the future because, you know, other phones just don't have the same type of security system and all these little sensors to do face unlock. They usually just use the camera. So face ID and security is pretty strong. It makes you feel like no one's really going to get into your phone. But at the same time, accuracy needs to be a little bit improved and speed needs to be improved on the iPhone 10. That's been my experience so far with face ID. So allow me to share my experience with the battery life on the iPhone 10. So first of all, I do keep some pretty good charging habits. So I still have 100% capacity left on this phone. And this phone hasn't been quite as impressive as the iPhone 8 Plus. I wanna get that out of the way first of all when it comes to the battery life. But it does have a pretty sizable cell in here. It's like 2700 or something like that, maybe 26. 100 milliamps it's like a 20 it's actually 2716 to be exact and it gets you through a full day rather easily i think light users could stretch 1.5 on the iphone 10 so it has good battery life and not one that's disappointing but at the same time it has one that if you use a lot of media apps and things like that it's still not going you know past the full day if you're going to be doing a lot of youtube video watching watching netflix this phone will definitely you'll still need one of those little external charging battery packs for this so you know moderate use easily really good battery life heavy use you might need to top up by the end of the day on the iphone 10 that's been my experience so far it's not a battery life that i go out and i feel like if i got a good charge i'm going to be left hanging dry without having any juice in this device so i think that overall i could give it the recommend if you're going to buy it in terms of battery life it's pretty strong i think the 10 plus is going to significantly improve on this phone's battery life however so an area that i can automatically recommend this phone for if you're still going to buy it is the camera apple has, has got a great camera on this iPhone 10 and one of the best you can buy on any smartphone today here's a couple phones I got to review the moto right here but you can see just great quality and I'm gonna show you a bunch of samples in a second but 4k 60 all the video modes on here it does have great format for you know getting a low storage out of those photos so you don't use that much space so if you do get a high capacity iPhone 10 you will get you know a lot of life out of these photos here so if you go to formats you can see high efficiency compatible you also have slow-mo up to 1080, 240. Not the best slow-mo on a phone, but overall, this camera is just phenomenal, and I think it's gonna replace a point-and-shoot for a lot of people. People who really care about a dedicated camera, they got all their lens systems and things like that, definitely are not gonna take an iPhone over that because that can do more. It's more geared towards photography, but the general consumer and even some pros who just need to get a quick you know, photo off for their website and things like that, it's gonna be just fine. So I'm gonna stop talking about the camera. You know what it's all about when it comes to the iPhone software. It's the same thing as always. It just has the included portrait mode. Portrait mode still needs a few updates to get those edges a little bit better. So that still needs work. But take a look at these samples of the iPhone 10 and judge for yourself if you still think that these photos are worth your time.
Okay, so let's discuss the call quality with the iPhone 10. I'm just going to share with you what I thought about it in my past eight months. Phenomenal. That's about it. I mean, it hasn't dropped one call. The sound through the speakers is very loud. It's a very reliable, competent performer. So when it comes to call quality, iPhones in the past haven't been my favorite phones to go to for making a phone call. But this year, the iPhone 10 is definitely one of my favorite phones to go to for that phone call quality. So they did a total turnaround when it comes to the you know performance in the calling application or the phone application. So those of you who rely on this part of the device, which is a critical aspect of a phone, this is great here on the iPhone 10. Next up, I want to talk about the audio on this phone. So you have a speaker at the bottom, the speaker at the top. Experience has been rich, full, and pretty fantastic here as well. No matter what you're doing, you're going to hear things on the iPhone 10. Let's go ahead and raise that volume up. Nice, clear, full sound. Cover the bottom, you can still hear it. Over the top, you can still hear it. Just a beautiful sound here for the iPhone 10. So really good external speakers. Again, no headphone jack. A lot of phones in this price category or less do offer this. A lot of premium phones as well, like the LG V30 series, the Galaxy S9 Plus. And lastly, I want to talk about Bluetooth 5.0. So Bluetooth 5.0 is something that's overlooked on this phone, but connecting to your devices has been ridiculously fast on the iPhone 10, like so fast that if you go to an older phone with like Bluetooth 4, you could definitely feel a little bit more of a lag delay connecting to your headphones and things like that. Also, the LTE standards are improved, so your LTE speeds are much faster on this phone. They almost feel Wi-Fi fast sometimes if provided you're in a good location, you have good LTE service on this phone, it feels pretty fast. So in conclusion, is the iPhone 10 worth your time right now? It's kind of hard to recommend this phone right now, considering how much you have to invest a thousand dollars to buy this phone. And in just two months, there might be a phone that offers everything you need at you know $300 cheaper. So I don't think a lot of people are gonna be buying an iPhone 10 right now, but it's kind of tricky because a lot of people have been saving up to buy an iPhone 10. They might be almost there or about to be there, but then they got like a month left until the new one comes out. So if you're that person, I definitely would recommend waiting because this phone is gonna be updated itself and it might even be cheaper at 899 and the iPhone 